Ta-da! Look, it's my new vlogging camera, the EOS R. I guess that means we should make a vlog and try it out. So, transform. $2,300, you don't transform into a vlogging camera? Gah! Holy moly, that's a vlogging rig. Mm, yeah, let's go try this bad boy out. All right, first morning light here, sun's kind of coming up. In fact, look guys, the moon. Take selfie screen. We're gonna go for a walk, see if we can catch a sunrise and yeah, I don't know, test out the camera. We're only at ISO 2000. This is a 16 to 35 F4 IS. So I picked it over the 28. I wish there was a 28 IS. Well, Cameron makes one, but it is so flippin' heavy. Twice the weight of either of the Canon lenses. Beautiful, but my arm's already like, hmm, you need to adjust a new vlogging camera. Yes, you do. Oh yeah, just for a friendly reminder, everyone, this camera's much heavier than the M50, which is what I was vlogging with before and maybe slightly more prone to um, slips and falls and, you know, because it's a big camera. But built like a tank, lens seems to be fine. used to having anything remotely cinematic with an ultra wide angle lens. The Canon M50 is a 1.6 prop and then that lens is f4 to 5.6 and so you're just not like getting those nice blurry backgrounds but it's nice going back to full frame. For situations like that it's nice to flip it into C-Log where the camera actually doesn't show you that super flat C-Log. It shows you kind of what it's going to look like in the end but it lets you do a lot more with it in post. But I need to get like a cinematic lens for this. I had the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter for my M50. That's f1.8 through the whole range. Super nice, no stabilization. So I'd have to use a little bit of digital IS. I don't know what to use yet. I still have the Sigma. And while I could put it on here in crop mode, you lose 60 frames per second in crop mode, which is kind of lame because that's the cinematic feel, so. Hey guys, what's up? Beautiful morning. Sun's about to come up. Hope you're having a great day. Okay, bye, see you. Oh, it's almost that time. It's below zero right now, in case you can't tell from my sniffling and maybe slightly red faces, although I'm sure the Canon colors are taking care of my skin. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? There she is. Sunrise. And cars. Cars everywhere. Hi, cars. Okay, we are gonna talk about 4K momentarily here in a minute, because it needs to be addressed, but first, just bear with me. Dynamic range test. How we doing? I started in C-Log for this, this one. But it's an ISO L, which actually goes all the way down to 100. I don't know, it's probably digital, but cool. And I don't even have the variable ND on or anything, it's just straight out of the camera. Ah, it's so bright. Okay, we're gonna talk 4K, but I'm gonna get ugh, coffee, 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 then. 4K, coffee 4K. Oh wait, hold up. Did I, I didn't do a whip transition. What kind of vlog does have whip transition? Whoa, almost had to hand in my vlogger card and that would have been not good, not good, coffee. Okay, 4K, the camera has it, but it's at a big 
crop factor 1.75 so it zooms in a ton now you can use crop sensor lenses like the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 which I have or you could use the Canon 10 to 18 millimeter which is super cheap f4.5 to 5.6 and it's image stabilized and you could vlog with it in 4k uh, the only thing is that the rolling shutter, the lines get like super wobbly and you get that like jello-y effect and the image stabilization might take something out of it and then your low light would not be nearly as good because you're on a much smaller sensor so I just, I don't know why you would do it. At least on this camera you get the great dual pixel autofocus and for me that's a benefit to having 4K is, is not for vlogging, it's for all the sit down uh, textile videos that I do where I can shoot in 4k I can have the dual pixel autofocus I'll back it up I'll put my Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter on it and it'll work great for that it'll be good for that but it's very much I would say a one-trick pony where the 4k can be nice is in that 4k time lapses that I was doing earlier is those those look awesome and I've been seeing lots of reviews where the Canon 4k is super duper sharp um, I turn the sharpening up in camera and the stuff I've seen of this looked really good, but I'm hoping to actually get to the camera store a little bit later today and put this up against the a7 III and try and sharpen this up in camera and see if they become more similar. Go watch Max Hero's review. It's frightening, actually, the, how unsharp it is. But I'm drink my coffee. How about the fact that this camera finally has aperture and shutter priority mode so you can actually walk from inside to outside and the camera should be able to figure it out with extreme changes if you don't have variable ND and I didn't have to touch anything. But again, the problem with those modes is it doesn't always get the exposure quite right when the background is, you know, too bright or too dark or your face isn't as well lit, but it's handy. Thank you EOS R because the M50 did not have that and I really wanted that. So I'm just going to jump in here. I went to Don's photo to compare the 4K quality between the a7 III and this EOS R. But they didn't have the a7 III, but they did have the Fuji X-T3, which is brilliant. Because I've heard that the EOS R is really soft, and I wanted to have something else to compare it to. Long story short, I made another video about that and how you can kind of fix it by sharpening it. But part of me actually regrets making the video because I've seen some great ones from Armando Ferreira, Ferrara, Ferrara, Potato Jet. And they're showing that the EOS R quality is its really not a problem, but I think you do need to have it set up right. So if you're interested in how you can sharpen up the quality of your EOS R, there's another video that I've probably thrown in the description or somewhere up here. You can check that out, but um, I'm not gonna include that in this video. And in fact, I'm just gonna fast forward to uh, much later in the day, do a low light test. Yeah, all right, so now this is gonna be the extremely wild low light test. In fact, it's, uh, it's actually Halloween and you guys ever tried this? What What do you think are the chances that that's all gone soon? Here's what I want to know. One, my biggest issue with the M50 was its low light performance, which was not good. You get over ISO 2500 and it would just kind of fall apart. What are we at right now? ISO 20,000. So, I, you know, it's probably going to be a bit, some grain and some noise, but the other one will get super soft and mushy and the colors look terrible. And anyway, I'll do a quick little Halloween trip here as the sun goes completely away and see if it still is usable and also how well does it focus like we're at ISO 20,000 hmm. it's still focusing even though it's so dark hey I see my family <laughs> of course the microphone then crapped out at the end of this vlog because it was my back one and I knew it was sketchy anyway it was done but here you could see that the low light's okay. It's definitely better than the M50 was it's not as good as you know some of the new Sony's out there but What's interesting is I remember I saw this video from Armando where he was talking about how putting it in C-Log in the dark, he was fine up to like ISO 10,000. So then I flipped it over to C-Log. And what do you know? This I think this is that ISO 6400, but the image looks much, much better, which is a fairly easy option to be able to do when it gets dark. So obviously those are insane conditions to do that in, but uh, you know, all, overall, I don't know, I'll have to review the footage. So, I mean, that's that's a fairly short vlog. It actually ended up getting filmed over a couple of days because I got busy doing other things. But 
you know, I've had a little bit of time with the EOS R and I'm excited in six months from now to, you know, review it again. And I've got some big projects coming up where I really get to use it. But initially I was pretty worried about the camera. Like I bought it because I had to buy it because it was the best camera with a flip screen and that's, that's what I needed. And then I started seeing some of the earlier reviews from the people who were in Hawaii and they were kind of bashing the camera. And then I saw a video from Max Yuryev where the camera was so lacking in detail. But then I saw some other videos from Potato Jet and Armando and some other people started creating some stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe it's okay. Cause it was doing phenomenally in their videos. And then when I saw the video quality of the stuff coming out here, I thought, you know what? I'm actually happy with the camera. It's what I wanted it to be. Although maybe the price is more than it should be, but 1080p quality, awesome. C-Log, super cool and really, really easy to work with. It's got the flip screen. The autofocus is fantastic. A couple of things that people didn't like about it, one were like the mode dial on the top. Hearing from the Canon engineers, what they said was by changing that mode dial, what it allowed them to do is actually to give three separate, completely custom modes for both photo and video. And this is awesome because if you do photo and video, which I do, you can have some custom modes for photo, but on video, you can have three different custom modes. One can be your 4K setting, one can be your slow motion C log setting, the other one can be your regular vlog setting, plus you can change the manual one. So I actually really like that feature. And then the whole touch bar thing, I actually like it. I hold it for a second and then it unlocks it and I use it to kind of change which focusing mode I'm doing. And somehow that seems to be the fastest, quickest way, even though I could probably, you know, hit the quick menu button and do it some other ways. I, I kind of like it. So overall, how do I feel about the camera? Yeah, it's still got some gaps, the 120 frames per second and the 4K isn't full frame, but I don't really need to do that. I just need it for right now when I'm shooting in 4K, I'll probably down as a 1080p, that's fine. But overall, I'm happy with the camera. I think it is going to be like the M50 where everybody panned the M50 at first, including me, and then ended up finding out this is a magical camera. EOS R is like, for the price, the specs don't make any sense at all. But then I think once you start getting to use it, you go, oh, this is a great, great tool for creators because of the flip screen and the great colors and the autofocus and the audio preamps that are better and all the custom modes that make it really easy to get into what you want to do and just get creating and the camera kind of gets out of the way of that. Uh, low light performance could be a little bit better, but if you're willing to do a bit of the work in C-Log, you can kind of save some of that and it's still a full frame Canon camera. The low light isn't atrocious. It, it could be a little bit better, but I think it's a really, really good tool. And I'm happy that I bought it, which when I say bought it, I thank you guys because you clicking on Amazon links meant I got all of it except for 50 bucks, you know, through Amazon gift cards. So thank you very much. Um, but stabilization with the 16 to 34, I'm happy with it. Uh, I need to get some cinematic lenses and put it through the paces. But um, yeah, cool. Good first impression EOS R, actually after a kind of a bad first impression. So, you know, in the end, hey, it works out. Oh yeah, if you want to um, subscribe or something, you know, to see more videos, I don't know, whatever the YouTubers say, you do that.